Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you all about web security. So what is web security all about? Well, for a start, web security is important for preventing people from, let's say, robbing a bank web application. So imagine you have your web service running on some server out in the internet, and you want people to be able to do online banking. Well, what does online banking include? Online banking includes the ability to transfer money from one person to another person. And it would be a massive issue if there were tons of web security considerations and problems related to this operation. So in this example, we can see that this red computer is making a request to the bank. And they're saying, hey, I would like you to do a bank transfer from blue to red, a million dollars. Uh, so clearly this is not good, right? This, this request is originating from red uh, and they're basically saying, I would like blue to give me a million dollars. Obviously the bank, uh, if it's a secure bank, would not allow this transaction to occur because who are you to dictate that blue should give you a million dollars? This doesn't really make any sense. Well, fortunately, we have a concept of web security. This gets denied. This isn't allowed. Uh, the bank is able to authenticate and say, hey, you're not the blue user. This is no good. Um, I am going to deny your request. And given web security, this is, uh, this is prevented. Now, in an elab a more elaborate scheme, you could imagine the following setup, which is that Red is hosting some website. And they say, hey, Blue, check out my website. And Blue and goes and makes a request to that website. Now. Maybe they're uh, very easily able to make them uh, convinced that they should access the website, or maybe uh, it takes a little bit of work to convince them to make that web to visit that website. But in either case, the the general assumption is that if you want someone to view a website, there is going to be a way that you can get them to view that website. That's kind of the general security model when thinking about the web, and. Within web security, this needs to be taken into consideration. This idea that someone might just suddenly visit some URL. Uh, we need to make sure that this doesn't have terrible security consequences. So Red says, hey, visit my website. This is going to say, hey, uh, I'm going to have some website, check it out. Okay, so Blue goes and connects up to that website, sends an HTTP request to access the, the root resource of that website, as we're familiar with. and the response, of course, is some sort of 200 OK and some sort of cool website. Like in this case, we have, hey, here's an image. And this image is a image that's going to be loaded from some other website. This image has a source attribute within the HTTP or within the HTML of this page. It has an image which is going to be accessible from some other website. Well, this other website is, in this case, the bank. It's saying, hey, check out this image. It's this uh, cool image where I want you to transfer a million dollars to me. Obviously, this is an issue. The web, web security needs to take into consideration this sort of concept. So now your browser, your user agent acting on your behalf that's just parsing this HTML page says, okay, I need to go fetch this image because obviously we have this cool website and Red says there's a cool image that can be seen over here. So let's go fetch that. Well, now we've got an issue. Your browser makes a request. Your user agent acting on your behalf makes this request off to the website. And your all-powerful user agent browser, for, let's say you've previously been interacting with this bank, you've already previously logged in, you've been authenticated, it has access to your cookies, the thing that really shows that you are authenticated, maintains your session, your state. And now you go to load up this image. It looks like any other request as if uh, you had manually accessed that yourself. And we have an issue, right? The money just got transferred. We just did a transfer request when we went to attempt to load this image. Now, fortunately, you don't have to worry about this. It turns out that uh, people have thought about this. This isn't something that's actually going to happen with any even remotely secure banking website. But the only reason that this is prevented is because of paying attention to web security, paying attention to considerations like this, paying attention to the fact that some other website uh, might make you make a request to some other website. And should we send our cookies along to make that request or not? You know, you could imagine uh, maybe it'd be convenient that we sent our cookies. Maybe we're accessing YouTube embedded in some website and it'd be really cool if, uh, if that request to YouTube included our authentication tokens, like included our session information, so that YouTube could 
understand the videos you're watching, maybe even in that embed, recommend a next video for you to watch, all based off of your session information, all based off of your account, all based off of stateful information it knows about your account. You know, there's times where it is in fact useful to send those cookies along with the request. It's not just, uh, you never want to do that. There's times when you want to, and this is the, the trade-offs and the considerations that must be made within web security. Uh, we kind of have on one end web security, on the other hand, we have web usability, right? We need to kind of consider both ends of this equation. When should we send cookies? When should we not? What kind of requests should we make? What kind of requests should we not make? All of this is very carefully considered and it's your, your browser that's kind of acting on your behalf and has all this information about you in some sense, right? It knows that you've logged into all these other websites. It knows all the session cookies to be able to, to resume that stateful interaction of some other web application. Your browser is acting on your behalf and has to decide what to do, what the secure operations it should make, what kind of secure requests it should make, whether it should make the requests or not, whether it should send the cookies or not. Well, so the thing that we need to consider here with the, as you can see, this web client security considerations, right? We've got this kind of spooky concept here where a web client is receiving arbitrary data from some remote server, right? You're connecting up to a web server, you're sending a get request or whatever HTTP request you're sending. And in return, the server is responding with a bunch of arbitrary data, right? That server could truly respond with anything. It doesn't even have to respond technically with an HTTP response. It could respond with anything. And your computer, your web agent, your, your browser needs to be ready to handle that arbitrary data. So this data, if we think about it like abstractly, some of the things this data may influence your client to do is perform a complex render of a page, right? Uh, there's all sorts of very complicated web applications out there with very complex pages that need to be rendered. And it turns out, the, though this module doesn't cover it, there's a, a lot of concerns there with are we rendering this correctly and are there security issues with that renderer you know you can imagine going through and parsing this massive blob of data to convert it into a web application page is kind of tricky and there's actually a lot of security considerations that we're not going to go into in this module but that is a complex task that has to happen and it needs to be done securely now, additionally, as we saw in the, the previous little rob a bank demo, we need to make additional HTTP requests potentially, right? This data might influence our client to go fetch an image, which, what does it mean to fetch an image? It means to send an HTTP uh, get request off to some other web server, right? So we're going to suddenly make an HTTP request that may or may not include authentication cookies or include uh, session cookies along with those requests, right? We, we load up page A and suddenly accessing server A and suddenly we're now also accessing server B. Like server A in some sense has just used us as a middle middleman to kind of make a different request, right? We saw before in the very beginning, A wanted to talk to B. Well, it wasn't able to because it didn't have that session information. Well, in this sense, we're able to kind of have A convince this middleman into now communicating with B. There's kind of like this, if you think about it very abstractly, there's this flow of data that A has convinced this third party into making data requests to B. This is kind of a, a little bit of a scary concept here. Uh, and then furthermore, if, that, if those two things don't scare you enough, right? We've got JavaScript. The, this arbitrary data that you're receiving from this server may include JavaScript. You might just be running straight up arbitrary code. Your browser, and although we're not really gonna get super into it in this particular module, your browser needs the capability of running quasi-arbitrary code. And when I say quasi, I mean, we need to be careful that it is not truly arbitrary code, right? Your, your browser, your, your web agent, your user agent is sitting on your machine and it's executing this quasi-arbitrary code. Well, we don't want that quasi-arbitrary code to be able to make, let's say, arbitrary system calls out to your kernel. Start, you know, uh, making a printer request or suddenly, uh, you know, deleting files off of your your system you know we don't want it to be truly arbitrary we need to somehow sandbox that code so your browser is really like kind of the the frontline defense here when it comes to web security that you're grabbing data from some remote server and that data is going to hit your browser 
and you're going to be doing some very complicated things with that data and we need to be very secure and careful with that. Now, we also have some web server security considerations. Consider the other end, right? We've got a web server that is now receiving arbitrary data from some remote client. This, this is also spooky, right? The client needs to be kind of afraid of the server and the server needs to be kind of afraid of the client. Like these two people are just sending arbitrary data at each other and this arbitrary data is hitting very complex programs, right? Uh, a web server could be a very complex program as can a web browser be a very complex program. So some things this data may influence the server to do, right? You, you receive this HTTP request, or again, it could be, doesn't even have to be an HTTP request. It can be truly arbitrary data, but let's assume an HTTP request uh, under normal-ish circumstances. Uh, that data might make your web application suddenly start accessing or modifying database data. You need to be very careful about that. You don't want the wrong data being modified or the wrong data being accessed. This is, uh, you're potentially holding this huge blob of data that holds sensitive information, like uh, you can imagine credit card information, you can imagine mailing information, you can imagine social security numbers, whatever, right? It could be holding some very sensitive data. And although it might not, your web application might not intentionally allow some user to access arbitrary bits of that data. Well, we need to make sure of that with web security, that the user is not somehow able to just start doing whatever they want with that database data. This is a, something that's kind of spooky, right? We gotta be a little careful with this. Furthermore, this data may influence the server to interact with a broader server system. So this server is just some program running on some system and there might be other components of the broader system that you're interacting with, right? You might have a web server and a mail server kind of sitting on the same uh, location or you might have a bunch of files sitting on that location. Well, if data is hitting this program, this, this program which is just the, the web server program, right, it might be now capable of interacting with other of those components. And you might intentionally want it to interact with other of those components. You might want the capability of sending some HTTP uh, requests at a server and suddenly it triggers and fires off an email, right? But we want to make sure that uh, we're not doing things incorrectly. So not just from an application perspective that like the, the requirements of our web application are being met correctly, but also from a security consideration that extra uh, actions are not possible. And finally, we kind of complete full circle a little bit here. Your web server might actually influence other web clients. So this some web client A might send data to a web server and as part of that, part of this broader system, that might influence other web clients into doing other things. So you could imagine sending data at a web server that in turn corrupts that web server in some way or somehow does something to that web server that then causes this arbitrary code that could then start running on web client B to be different, right? So client A might influence client B by proxy of this web server. It might, client A might convince client B into running its client A's arbitrary code, malicious code potentially, by way of this server. And these are all really important things that need to be considered in the context of web security.